Huffy's Dakari, their new mountain bike at Walmart. I have a review on this. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch that. This, not as exciting or flashy, this is for the tech heads. This is a geometry and specs video, unofficial, and I want to stress that. I purchased this bike on my own. I don't have any contacts at Huffy, which is why this is an unofficial specs video. I've made all of these measurements myself. So if something's off by a millimeter or two, don't hold me responsible. This is unofficial. Let me run down. I'm going to start at the top with what we already know. In my base review, I told you these bars are 720 millimeters wide. They're 31.8 millimeter diameter. The stem, roughly, I'm going to say, eh, roughly 70 millimeters, actually closer to 65. And we know that the seat post diameter is 27.2 millimeters and the length is around 330 millimeters. Actually, not quite. Even though it extends up so high, it seems like it is larger. And we also know that this is a small frame bike. The frame size, 15 and a quarter inches. Not very big on the frame, but that seat post does extend up enough that my 510 height body fits on this quite well. We also know that the crank arms are bizarrely long on this bike. 175 millimeters, really a strange combo on a 15-ish inch frame, 15 and a quarter inch, but I'm just gonna say 15 because it's in the 15 class. And you're probably already asking, why do you have your seat post slammed so far down? Well, that's the number one question I have been asked, is how low will this seat go? Well, that's it. And that is 29 and three quarter inches, which equates to around 756 millimeters. And other than this seat height, which is, you know, big deal, important, big questions asked. Let's go over all the other specs as I've measured them. And again, this is unofficial, but I'm going to start right back here at the rear spacing. People ask that. That's the spacing between one side to the other. And that is 135 millimeters. Next, we're going to move up from there to this, this bar right here, that is called the seat stay, and that's 430 millimeters, and I'm measuring middle to middle. If you wonder where I'm going, I'm going from the middle of the seat tube to the middle of the dropout. Now moving down here to the seat, or excuse me, the chain stay, this chain stay, 433 millimeters. Again, from the middle of the dropout to the middle of the bottom bracket, and that bottom bracket is 68 millimeters. The seat tube we already know because of the size of the frame. This is 15.125 inches. I'll try to maybe convert this on my screen for our metric friends. The top tube length, big important measurement to a lot of people, 560 millimeters. Down tube, measuring from the center of the bottom bracket to the center of the head tube, right along this line here. I'm gonna edit this in so if the audio sounds different, that's why the proper down tube length is 690 millimeters. The head tube itself, from top to bottom, not counting the cups, 100 millimeters, and that head tube angle, we know that from the previous video. Seat tube angle, I'm only now realizing I didn't measure while I was putting all this together before I set the camera up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that on the screen right now. So you'll be seeing the degree angle of this seat tube on your screen. We've talked about the rear spacing being 135 millimeters. Now let's talk about up front here, that's 100 millimeters. Not to be confused with the 100 millimeters of travel that's up here. Now let's talk about the reach and stack. People ask about that a lot. Not a lot of people know actually what it is, but before I give you that measurement, I need to set up my fancy Alabama engineered measurement apparatus. There we go, measurement apparatus fully in place, and you can see, super fancy. And the way I'm measuring this, is I'm going from the center of the top of the top tube or the head tube, and I'm running this line straight across to the point where it intersects with a vertical line going from the center of the bottom bracket. So there to there is the stack. Here to here is the reach. So what are my measurements? Well, get my paper out here a little different than I expected when I kind of thought what this would be in my head just based on the ride. But this is what I get, and again, this is unofficial, but I'm getting 400 millimeters measuring from here to here. And this is level. You can see I've got the bubble on the level right there. So 400 millimeters and the stack, that's the reach. And the stack going from here down to the center of the bottom bracket, 600 millimeters. 
So 400 millimeters for the reach, 600 for the stack. So there you go. The unofficial geometry specs for the Huffy Dakari. If there's anything that I left out here, something you're curious about that I didn't mention, be sure to comment with it and I'll try to reply with the proper measurement or at least something. I always read each and every comment, so I'll try my best to respond. But we're not done just yet because there's something else about the Huffy Dakari and this has really been eating at me. Been wanting to get at this, find out the truth. So let me rearrange stuff and we'll go to a different camera angle. Tapered head tube, one of the big ticket items, at least in looks, because they don't really mention it in the specs, but a modern Walmart mountain bike, well, the competition for this bike, have a tapered head tube. And what do I mean by taper? This is 51 millimeters and this is 57 millimeters. And I'm curious about this. The reason I'm talking about it right now is because normally the whole deal with the tapered head tube you want to be able to put in a tapered fork or have the option to put in a tapered fork. Why would you use the tapered fork? Well, they're stronger plus all the best modern forks. They're coming out in tapered. Sometimes you can't even get them in a straight steer. But this taper, this 51 to 57, that's a lot smaller than what I'm normally used to. And every tapered headset that I've seen thus far for any of these big box bikes is a 56 or a 55 millimeter. So... Let's take this lower headset cup out and see what size it is. First discovery, a cage bearing headset. And all the bearings are intact, so that's good news. And it's greased. Not a lot, but there is grease in there. So yay for that. Lower headset cup removed and I spared you the 15 minutes while I was looking for my calipers that were literally right in front of me, right down there on the stand that the camera is sitting on. Ah, so annoying. So let's see what size this is. 50.5 millimeters. I don't know if you can see that. That's, uh, well, that's not good. I don't even know of a tapered headset or a headset that will allow a tapered fork that will fit in 50.5 millimeters. If you do, comment below because right now, you know, I'm, I'm kind of frustrated. Uh, in my opinion, that somewhat ruins, at least for me, what this bike has potential of or had potential of. So yeah, 50.5. E. I guess I'm going to end here. So comment below. I'm sure you're going to have comments. I, I know I do, but I'll say most of them off camera. Thank you for watching. Please comment below. Give this video a thumbs up. It always helps the channel. Thanks so much. Have a great day.